Hey, my mesmerizing dancing hamsters. By this point, you should have an idea for your own video series, a name for that series, a logo, a YouTube channel, and a design for that channel. If you don't, then just click one of these videos and you'll jump right to that specific video. It's kind of like teleportation. So now we can move on to the next step, which is making your own web site. I'm not feeling so good. The key to making your presence known on the web is through having a website, a single location in which people can find you and see what you have to offer. Now for all intents and purposes, you can use your YouTube channel as a website, but having a separate website has one distinct advantage. You can start earning money from it right away. That is, you can embed your YouTube videos on your website along with some ads and then refer people to your website to watch the videos. That way you're getting both video views and you can start earning money immediately. So over the next few weeks, we'll focus on getting a website with ads up and running. So where do we start? Well, in order to get something to show up on the internet, you have to find somebody that will host it on the internet for you. Hosting is simply a means of serving content on the internet. Technically, you could host the website yourself on your own computer, but that requires your computer to be on permanently, and if a lot of people start visiting your site, then your internet connection could slow to a crawl. A less stressful option would be to have someone host it for you, which is the option that I'm going to show you. If you search Google for website hosting, you'll come up with hundreds to thousands of different options. And what's nice is that if you search for free website hosting, you can find hosting options that you don't even have to pay for. What's the difference between paid and free hosting? In a word, quality. Free hosting generally doesn't have as many features, has a lot less storage, and has a lot more traffic limits, which means if a lot of people start visiting your website, the slower it will be, or it could possibly even crash. That being said, if you're just starting out with a website, then you probably won't have that much traffic. So a free web host would be fine, at least to start out with. Just keep in mind that if your website starts getting popular and a lot more people start visiting it, then you will eventually have to upgrade to paid hosting. The host that you choose should be the one that meets all the requirements that your website will need. How do you know what your website will need? Well, that depends on what you're going to put on it. For example, I found that the best way to showcase videos on a website is through using a content management system, or CMS. A good, free, easy to use CMS platform is WordPress, which I'll show you how to set up later. WordPress requires PHP and MySQL support. So you want to find a web host that supports both PHP and MySQL. One free option that I found and used on many occasions is 000webhost.com, but if you find a better one, feel free to use that instead. But for 000webhost, just sign up for a free account and log in. You should eventually come to this page where you can access the C panel, which is like the control panel. This is where you can control all the aspects of your website. So what we need to do is get it ready to install WordPress. The first step is to make it so that we can upload and add files to our website host. Triple Zero Web Host has a few different ways to do this, but the most effective way is through FTP, or File Transfer Protocol. So click on View FTP Details and download and install FileZilla from the recommended clients. After you have it up and running, you can use the information on this page to create an FTP connection with FileZilla. Once connected, open up the public HTML folder, and now you can just drag and drop any files that you want to upload to your website into this folder. I'll cover that in more detail in the next episode, but there's one last thing that we have to do before we can install WordPress, and that's create a database. A database essentially will store and organize all the data for your website. To create one, just find the MySQL icon and click it to add a new database. Remember all the information it gives you on this screen, such as a name and password, because we'll need that later. 
All right, now you've got your web host set up and prepped to install WordPress. But there's a lot of steps that go into actually installing WordPress, so I'm going to save that for next week's episode. I'll also show you how you can add really cool themes to your WordPress website. So stay tuned next Friday for the next episode.